Amen. Okay, some uh, straightforward things, first of all. Okay, we're in a new place, so you probably want to know where things are. Okie dokie. Right. Out that door, to my right. It's outside. Don't <laughs> <laughs> you just love something that's smart? <laughs> okay, out that door to my right, with the ladies and gents. Please excuse the state of them, they are in the process of being refurbished, okay, they're a bit basic, but just bear with it. Okay, well, there are other toilets halfway down the corridor that way. Um, they were disabled, but there are two on either side. So, the exits are the one that you came in, and also for any reason we can't get out of that one, you go down the corridor, past the kitchen, you turn the left, and out the back door. Okay? I think that probably settles most of the stuff for the moment. God is good. Okay. For those of you who came to help last night to get this set up, thank you very much. Yeah. Very much appreciated. Um, Ruby's been busy. Okay, we've got these little leaflets. His family church, friendly non denominational church, now meeting every Sunday, 1030 Parkour Road Association, Parkour Road, all welcome. I think Ruby, I don't know how many you delivered, but. Well, you've got two pails and that two by the pail. There you go. Well done, Ruby. Good for you. <laughs> Okay, so hopefully we'll see some results from that. Okay, October birthdays. Oh, today. Four. Where is he? Happy birthday. And then the best person in the world, as far as I'm concerned, on the first of my quite lovely wife. So, and we have one one anniversary, which is Ryan and Chris. How many years now? 26. Woo! Hallelujah. Okay. I, just, I was just reading this Sunday morning session before we started. Uh, wow. Where did this come from? It's another lion bite. Okay. There you go. Whatever well, lion bites are. Okay. It says, this is not the time for you to sit back and think. I have come so far, so I will stay where I am. Do not be satisfied with where you are, but keep pressing in for more of God's manifest presence in your life. Press in for more of His power and revelation in your life. You have not arrived at your destination. You still have so much more to press in for and to contend for. Amen. God is coming to turn up the temperature. Okay, so next week we won't need heaters on. For those who have been come. Those who have become comfortable in the condition where they're at, the Holy Spirit encourages you to keep contending for my presence, pressing for the flow that comes when you seek my face. I want to release so much more of you. Are you hungry for more? Thank you. Do not become complacent and comfortable where you are. Keep moving. Don't stop. Yeah. For I am coming to turn up the thermostat that is around, and the atmosphere that is around you. Get ready for a tangible sense of my manifest presence. Amen. Amen. In Philippians 3, 13, 15. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, or got hold of, but one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forward to the things that are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many as are mature, have this in mind. And if anything you think otherwise, God will be revealing this to you. Amen. Yes. Amen. Okay. So here we are, in a new place. Hallelujah. Um, we've got a lovely band as usual. Let's set out. You can see them all now. They're not right behind each other. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. Okay. It's offering time. Amen. Father, we just thank you for your blessing. We thank you, Father, for your favour and your faithfulness. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us into this new place. And Father, we just pray right now as we place our tithes and offerings in here this morning. Lord, that you will multiply to the glory of your kingdom in this community. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Glasgow called the Glasgow Prophetic Center. Okay? And
And so they sent you emails every day of what God's been doing as these people are praying over Glasgow and over Scotland. And um, I chose that one earlier on in the week. To be honest with you, I didn't actually read all of it. And so I didn't actually realize what that verse was that um, Nicholas read out was what was on it. But this morning, Darren, prayer, that is actually the verse that God gave us as we're entering into this new place. So I want you to take that on board as I take it on board as we take it on board. And we are pressing on in this new thing. So thank you. You know, there are some things that never change. First Sunday of the month. Open offering! Woo! <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, even though it's just. I don't know what you do with your time, you must just be 
continually bored when you're like sitting there with no internet or Facebook and stuff. And so you won't realize that this is like a virtual farm. I have a virtual farm. I've been tending it over the last two or three days just for you guys. So I have something to talk about this morning. Now, if I can get to work, we're going to show some footage. Because that will be really exciting too. Says, I know it might hard, but I'll just read it out loud for you. 
Come, lean on, trust in, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind. And do not rely on your own insight or understanding, but in all your ways know, recognize, and acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path and make straight and plain your path. So, for me, there's some things that my life goes through sometimes that, you know, it's, it's, it's old. Also, I sometimes I feel like I'm in the flames quite a bit, um, and it feels like it's just, everything's kind of just, oh, you know, you can't see the forest for all the trees, but right now you can't see the forest at all because it's all on fire. And um, i kind of been thinking about, you know, all right, Lord, I don't want to be in the flames all the time. So that's not like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, where, you know, they got in the flame and they welcomed God and we came in the flame with them. I welcome you, God, and all of that. That's not my point this morning, though. My point is that there's a purpose for the, there's a purpose for the flame. And in this, it has to go to the next picture. This is the, 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 the after of the, of the fire that burned up the Los Angeles, California National Park place. Um, next one. I just want to give you an idea of the devastation that happened there. Okay. So it's a little blurry right now because, you know, that's technology for me. But there's a little bit of color behind there. I want you to catch it. There's a little bit of color, okay? The, the tree, although you can't see it because I had to kind of crop it so you can see just a little bit. Um, that tree is still burned. That's the aftermath of the fire. But behind it, it's starting to grow again. So it casts it to the next one. And that is the full picture. So what happens in, in the in Angeles National Park, what happens when the fire comes and it burns up all the ground, it actually causes what's called a fire follower. That's what a flower is called. It's a wild flower called a fire follower. And a fire follower, follower only blooms after a fire. It only blooms after the ground has been torched and burned. And it kind of releases, releases like nitrates and you know all kinds of healthy things that when the fire comes, it kind of brushes off the weeds and it takes away the things in the bushes that kind of grow over it that cause it to be kind of in the shadow, as it were. But when the fire comes, it takes everything out of the way and it causes this flower to bloom. So you go to the next one. Okay, and that's just kind of another idea. I want you to understand the splendor of it. Okay, so previous picture I showed you was just des desolate land. There was nothing growing. There was kind of a feeling of no hope. But yet in the midst of that, there's growth. There's what's called flowers that grow up to be fire followers. So you can see there's still scorched ground around there, but then there's still flowers growing in the midst of it. Now here's my point. Um, I was reading a book called The Furious Love of God, and um, it's by a guy named Brendan Manning, and he says, the question is not can we heal, the question the only question is, will we let the healing power of the risen Jesus flow through us to reach and touch others, so that they may dream and fight and bear and run where the brave dare not go? Now, I looked up fire followers, I was reading a different book, and they kind of used the analogy of fire followers for what they were doing in their story. Their story was rescuing traffic women, and they called their, their group fire followers because out of the ashes, the beauty comes. And that kind of caught up my attention. So I was looking and reading on the history of behind this, and one of the botanists named Professor Halsley says that the Brodelia, which is a type of seed, it existed before the fire, but it is aided by the clearing out of other weeds and branches that blocked the sun's rays. So once the fire came through, it's like it threw up its leaves and said, wow, what is happening? The physiological response tells the bowl to party. Okay. And what I wanted to grab a hold of is that when I trust in, lean on, and rely on God, He's going to bring that fire follower, that flower, that blossom in the midst of what I thought was only a flame, or in the midst of what I thought was only scorched ground, or in the midst of what I thought was only desert land. That God is in the business of causing beauty out of the ashes. <coughs> in Isaiah 61, I know we all know it, but I'm going to read it to you just to kind of remind you again of what God has done. It says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed and qualified me to preach the gospel of good tidings to the poor and afflicted. 
He has sent me to bind up and heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the physical and spiritual captives, and the opening of the prison and of the eyes to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and of his favor, the day of the vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant, to grant joy to those who mourn in Zion, to give them an ornament or garland or diadem of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of heavy, burdened, and failing spirit, that they be called oaks of righteousness, lofty, strong, and magnificent, distinguished for uprightness, justice, and right standing with God, the planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. And instead of your former shame, you shall have a twofold recompense. Instead of dishonor and reproach, reproach you, you shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double what they have forfeited. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. Now, I want you to catch that, you know, sometimes it's easy to only look at what we're going through, only look at the flames. And um, for me, personally, when I am struggling, or I'm allowing myself to get overwhelmed, and I think I can only see something that's burned, or something that just seems like it's finished, you know, there's nothing there, that I go back to the Proverbs, and I'm like, no. I trust him with my whole heart. I trust him with my whole heart, and I don't go by my own understanding. So what I'm, I'm going to give you guys this morning is not your own understanding. I'm going to give you God's understanding, okay? Because his understanding is that we've got beauty for ashes. His understanding is that life can be renewed. His understanding is that there can be joy instead of sorrow. His understanding is that in the midst of the pain, you can have freedom. In the midst of the pain, you can be liberated. In the midst of the pain, the captive can be freed. All right, that's his understanding. And um, at the beginning of this, when I read to you a little bit about um, how the fire had got started in Los Angeles, it says that it was started by an arsonist. And while I'm not going to like you know, talk about the arsonist, the point is that was a negative thing. It was. Arsonist is someone who starts fires. <laughs> a bad thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> my point in it is that um, in like into the story of Joseph, what the enemy t- intended for evil, God turned to good. You know, and that's the same thing with this story. Even in nature, even in you know just the you know botanists and horticulturists and scientists looking at the wonder of flowers blooming out of ash that um, God is telling us, even in that, even in his creation, not just in the people, but in creation in, in itself, that he will cause what the enemy intended for evil, for the good. Now, hundreds and thousands of people kind of like flock to these um, forests in mostly Los Angeles, where it's quite a desert place anyways, um, and they expect now that, that there will be a blossom and a bloom that will be like extravagant. They look forward to it. because. Is part of the natural cause as well, not just always by arson, um, that the ground gets burned so that, um, it's just part of nature really, but my point of that is that again, what we in our own understanding says is, well that just seems so harsh, that just seems kind of like, well what's the point then? It's just going to keep getting burned, what's the point? And yet in the midst of that, God's like, no, I want you to remember it again, and again and again that life is renewed, that hope is always there, your hope will not be disappointed, and that if you trust, lean and rely on me with your whole heart and not on your own understanding, I'm going to make plain your path. I'm going to make it straight. I'm going to show you what to do. And I really, I love that. And um, I was reading through, I get like a word for the day, every day in my email, and in 1 Peter 1, 7, it says, These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. And the kind of blurb here is it says, one thing we have to realize is that God is not going to deliver us from every difficulty. He is not going to keep us from every challenge. If he did, we would never grow. The scripture says our faith is tried to the, in the fire of affliction. When you're in tough times, that's an opportunity for your face to shine. Okay, or as a fire follower, that's an opportunity for your leaf to sprout up again. That's another opportunity for you to see, you know, um, the message version that says, this Isaiah 61, is that God calls this beauty for ashes, it says a bouquet of roses for ashes. Okay, which just kind of give you another visual um, of what I'm trying to show you with the flowers. And 
Um, it says, anybody can get negative and bitter and blame God or lose their passion. That's easy. If you want to pass the test, if you want God to take you to a new level, new level you cannot be a weakling. You've got to be a warrior. Dig your heels in and say like Paul, I can handle it. I'm ready for it. I'm equal to it. I know God is still on the throne. He is fighting my battles. And on the other side of this difficulty is a new level of my destiny. Okay. And what I really like then is on the other side of that is what, for me, what problem is all about. On the other side of my own understanding, that's the true picture. That's the real story. That's who we really are. We really are fire followers. We really are the ones that miss the flame. We know that the greater glory is just about to come. The beauty is just about to sprout out. Or even if it's not just in us, we can see it in circumstances and other people. Um, for instance, if I'm going through something that I'm praying diligently for someone, and I just want them to see, I want them to see it, and I know that eventually they're going to become a fire follower. I know that. I know that because God's word doesn't return void. And he doesn't, it's irrevocable, the Bible says. So it doesn't come back to him empty. Every seed is programmed to make it. That's what the Bible teaches us. 